gotta do the whole thing. What up everybody, it's the man with the plan, Daniel Shane here, and it is Africonomy in the building. We're here to do another installation of the Black Business Review. I'm here with P. P, say what up to the people. Hey, what's up? What's good? What's going on? Yes, 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 yes. We're here for that new installation, the Black Business Review. I think you're going to like this one. I hope you brought your appetite. To this installation of Black Business Review, we're going to be doing a review of a restaurant located in Miramar, Florida. Okay, um, it's on 441, a little bit north of Miramar Parkway. It's called Coconuts. All right, Coconuts. The name's kind of misleading now that I think about it, P. It's called Coconuts. It don't sound nothing like what the hell it is, though. Why? I, I mean, because when, when you coconuts, when you think about coconuts, what do you, what do you, what's I, in your vision? Like I you mean, think I, of a Caribbean place, a tropical environment. I mean, yeah, but uh, you know, I, I more so think of laying on the beach type shit, not so much eating. You know what I mean? I'm throwed off a little bit, uh, yeah, just a little okay. bit. Mm. All right. Anyway, 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 the name is the name. I mean, you know, that that plays somewhat of a small role in the in the larger scale of things. Anyway, 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 anyway. Uh, this is a black business review about uh, Coconuts, the restaurant. It's a uh, Jamaican restaurant. It's been around for a while. P, you know exactly how long this restaurant's been around? Um, I don't know exactly how long, but it's been around for a long time. I was like in, I was like in high school when that place was there. I'm not trying to show my age, but you know, uh, this is, if it was when P was in high school, I'm P not is that old as shit now. I'm not that old. <laughs> I ain't that old. It's been long. It's been more than ten years. It's been more than ten years. So coconuts has been going strong longer than ten years, which is which is great. You know what I mean? Because they say most businesses actually fail within the first like one to two years. You know what I'm saying? So you know that's good to know that this has kind of been a long-standing business. You know what I mean? And uh, and one thing that we must talk about is how do we know that this is black-owned? Because you know even though this is a business going on strong for. 10 plus years uh, the whole purpose of these reviews is to bring attention to black businesses okay not those other businesses they get enough attention so how do how do we know that this is black owned p let's talk a little bit about that well i mean there's various ways that you can check um you can look at their business license mm. um the operator license to see who's the name listed on the llc mm. then you can search the name mm -hmm. to look mm -hmm. up the person in Florida, you can go to a website called Sunbiz. Sunbiz, you can see all the uh, all the managers and owners of said company um, on Sunbiz. You know, whatever the name of their LLC is, or fictitious name, or DBA. For a lot of people, you can see that stuff on there. Um, so yes, um, that was one of the ways we were able to tell. But really, we kind of got the information, kind of from various sources like uh word of mouth and things like that yeah. in in essence in essence how sure are we that this is a black owned business on a scale of one to ten um i would i would probably say on a scale of one to ten majority owned majority owned i, I would say uh a seven and a half or eight yeah, seven and a half, seven eight. And a half right? That's pretty good. That's not too bad. Because, you know, a lot of people would think, okay, it's a Jamaican restaurant, so it has to be, has to be black owned. You know. But no, no, not necessarily. There's a lot of Chinese people in Jamaica. There's a lot of white people in Jamaica. There's a lot of others in Jamaica. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a black owned business. But Peas is about 70% sure. Me, I'm more like. 55%, 60% sure that this is a black owned business, but we got enough to go on in order to kind of do a review of it. And I'm at least sure that black people are running the show, which don't really say too much these days, but it's good enough to do a review. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and jump right on into it. Okay. So me and P went maybe like uh, I want to say a few days ago or whatnot. We went on what day of the week was that? Was it a Wednesday? It was Tuesday. It was Tuesday. A Tuesday. 
Okay, Tuesday. So, you know, you kind of want to know what day of the week it is to kind of get an idea of everything. You know what I mean? Because usually restaurants boom the most between maybe, you know, on the weekends. You know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. That's usually like the busiest time for any kind of restaurant. So, for us to go on a Tuesday, that kind of goes to show that it's it's probably it was probably more of one of its slow nights. You know what I mean? Where stuff was going on. So, you know. We'll give you all our impressions and everything, but it was pretty much a Tuesday night. You know, we pulled up to the place, and and what was your assessment of the outside of the place, P? How did you like the outside of it? Uh, well, I mean, the outside could always they could always be worked on. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, you know, it's, <laughs> it's you know, it's not breathtakingly beautiful or. As you can tell, P is very eyes. critical on outward appearances of the place. You know, it's not a big place. So, I mean, it, you know, it can be worked on. Describe it for the people who may not really know what the hell they were looking at. Well, I mean, you'll notice the place because the painting, it's like it's like it's like yellow and green. Yellow and green. And there's like a green fence. Yeah. And then on the right side of the fence is the i guess the additional parking which it's it's uh it's not paved it's just gravel it's a gravel mm. parking lot mm. so i don't know necessarily if they own that lot they might be leasing it mm. so that's probably why that that lot hasn't been uh paved mm. i see i see usually that happens that happens a lot so they in that area in that area you know they might not want to develop in that area yet so to make money off the land because you know whether you have something on it or not you still got to pay taxes for the land so they probably at least that land out to somebody and they may be paying a lease to park vehicles on there um yeah hmm. so you're saying the curb appeal wasn't very wasn't very good if you were driving by and you didn't know to go there would you stop no. Oh, damn. Well, I mean, that's pretty much my assessment of it as well, unfortunately. Um, P's critical, but, um, you know, I'm a little more fair when it comes to that type of thing. But I will say that the place um, is definitely exterior wise needed some renovations. Uh, the yellow color. Some you know, TLC. Some TLC. <laughs> yeah, they need some, to chase, chase little, some waterfalls. TLC. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, it. It, the, even the yellow was a faded yellow. It was like a faded green, you know what I mean. And then the gravel on the on the uh, on the uh, for the parking lot, it it looked a little trap houses. Houses, I can't even say house. It looked a little trap houses. Houses. How house ish? House ish. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Something fucking up like left that. and right. Something but look, like that, yeah. it look it looked it looked it didn't look like a place that would be appetizing for you to go eat that much is for certain you know what i mean so you know that was my initial impression of this place okay so let's talk a little bit considering considering the cur the lack of curb appeal how do we find out about this place like how do we know about it well i mean i've i've always noticed the place because uh that used to be my my route when i used to go jogging and like practicing for basketball so you hear that ladies p is actually an iron man <laughs> and I, I, i'm an like iron man i'm like one level away from fat thor so I'm just playing, pretty I'm much just <laughs> so pretty i'm skinny much. but i'm not in shape right now man I, I need to i need to exercise ladies you hear that p used to go jogging past the jamaican food restaurants okay all right just keep that in mind P, give out your contact information for the ladies that want to know. <laughs> Chill, man. Tripping, man. <laughs> anyway, aside from all that shit. All right. Uh, so P discovered it as you were jogging. Okay. Yeah, that and then also word of mouth. Word of mouth. Should, what made you eat there? You said word of mouth? That's yeah, what made it's you word, eat of, word of mouth. Well, jogging past it, you can smell the food. It's food smell good. And that makes you want to like, hey, this smell good. Let me uh, see what's going on here. So as you were as you were jogging past, did you ever try the place when you were there? Yeah, I had like maybe one or two dishes from there. Okay, okay. So yeah, all right. Well, I guess it, you know, 
you have to be close enough in order to smell the food. But if you can't smell the food, then yeah, probably would have kept jogging. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, you know, I, I can say without a shadow of a doubt, there's no way I would have ever stopped there had I not known about the place prior and be looking for it. You know what I mean? So. Um, that's definitely something they would want to work on, you know. I mean, but but then at the end of the day, when you're talking about a restaurant, food kind of rules all. But yeah, I think I think they their customer base is is probably generated by word of mouth definitely. because there's a lot of people. Like if I go on social media, um, I do see people talking about that place, um, mm-hmm. especially the people that live in Miramar. Um, I do hear people talk about it, so that's when you know that's when you know a mom and pop restaurant is good when you hear good things from people from different people people that don't even know each other you just hear from multiple people you know okay all right show you right show you right and um the other thing about it is is like uh seeing how you mentioned it social media how's i mean do they have like a website do they have like a following do they have instagram what's what's going well, on with all that i haven't checked to see if they have an instagram um but their place is listed if you type their business name in on Google. Mm-hmm. And you can see that they have a lot of good reviews. They actually got four and a half stars. 469 reviews. So it's a lot of reviews. Ooh. And they do have a website. Ooh. And to my surprise, the website is uh, it's decent looking. And... It is mobile enabled, which that surprised me because a lot of times I go on uh, restaurant websites and stuff like that, mom and pop restaurant websites, and it's not really done well. Mm -hmm. But this, the website is clean. You can see the dishes. You can see the menu. uh, You can see the opening hours. It's, 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 it's good. Okay. Hey, that's what I'm talking about. At the end of the day, it's, it's. You know, people need to know about your business. If people don't know about your business, how can they patronize your business? So what we want to get an understanding of is what are they doing to get the word out about themselves as a business, as a company? Making good food. Making good food. You know, making good food is one thing. Yeah. But if nobody knows you're making good food, what the hell is the point? You're cooking for yourself, pretty much. That is very true. That is very true. But word of mouth is a powerful thing. I mean, you, it is you know, a form of word of mouth is a form of marketing. Definitely is. I don't know if they're doing any type of flyers. Um, mm-hmm. Like I said, I didn't check to see if they had any type of social media, or if they have a Facebook like social media, like a Facebook page or Instagram or anything. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, they're doing one. Ty- it, they are doing definitely one type of marketing, which is word of mouth. Okay. All right. Show you right. Show you right. Okay. All right. Well, with all that out the way, we definitely want to now get to the part where we actually enter the building after the initial shock of the exterior of the building. Let's let's talk a little bit about the interior of the building. P, go ahead and kick that off, man. How was the interior of the building? How did it look? What were your first impressions? How did you feel? Were you still hungry when you got in there? Was it clean? Talk about it. I was, well, when I opened the door and went in, I was like, wow, this place is uh, kind of small. <laughs> and there wasn't that much people in it, but it felt cramped because mm-hmm. as soon as you enter, the kitchen is right there. So you're saying the feng shui was fucked up. Is that what you're trying to say? Kind of. Okay. Kind of. Kind of. Um, initially, when you come in, like, the kitchen is right there. So it wasn't that part. That that part by the door wasn't that clean. Mm. I guess that's where they were putting, like, the plates and the pots that they needed to wash and stuff like that. Things that were in the way of them cooking, they put all the way right there. So I noticed that instantly. I'm like, wow, they got to take care of that. Um, but I mean, it still smelled good in there. Like as soon as you open the door, the the f- smell hits you in the face. Like whoa, yeah, I smell fresh seasoning and, and fresh herbs. You know? Yeah. Or what did you think about like the design though? Like the like what? Well, hold on. How, was it clean? Did you think it was clean? Not that part. Not that part that 
you know, where the employees go to the beginning of the kitchen where they had like all the dirty pots and stuff like that. That part wasn't clean. Jesus. I felt like that should have been it should have been exposed or, you know, noticeable. They should have had something to cover that mm. to to not let people see that. But then the building, it's a small it's a small area, you know. The kitchen probably should have been in the back. Because it's like when you walk into it, yeah. you walk straight into the kitchen, kind of. You know what I mean? It's like the kitchen should kind of be, you know what I mean? Wherever the entrance is, the kitchen should be on the other side. Yeah. That way you got your place where you place your orders first. But how it was set up is the kitchen was in the front and then the dining room was in the back. So you got to like go back to eat. I don't know. It was kind of weird. It kind of gives you, to tell you the truth, the layout of it, it kind of sets the tone of, pick up your food and go not so much eat (laughs) and maybe that was what they were going for you know i mean maybe but anyway anyway let me get into my impressions of it when i walked into it so when i walked into the building you know i mean you know the 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 you know the fresh herbs and seasonings they hit you right in the face um you know i mean which is a which is a good thing because you know you want everything to be fresh fresh goodness everything that you're putting into your system um, but as for the design of it, you know, just like P said, it was a little cramped. There was actually a few people in there when we went in there. So we kind of had to stand in line and there was really no place to stand in line. And there wasn't that many people there. Uh, so it was like, you know, you kind of up against the wall, you know, what I mean, you know, waiting for the line to move. And it's like, OK, all right. You know, what I mean, it wasn't horrible, but at the same time. If you're going to be waiting, you kind of want to be as comfortable as possible and you kind of want to give people they five feet and you really couldn't do that in that space. Yeah. Um, as for like the designs, they had some interesting like murals and stuff that was kind of in the, in the building too. Uh, little uh, tapestries and paintings on the wall. Yeah, of, but you, you see that when you really get to the dining area. Right, right, right. So I guess I'm kind of jumping over to the dining area. But the original place where you placed the order was kind of bland a little bland yeah but they, they did have they did have some some led screens yeah they had some led screens mounted. with the menus yeah. okay so that tells me at least they live in 2019 because you know <laughs> a, lot, a lot of these places man they, you know you, they got the little menus with the paper you picking them up anyway i'm getting off topic but you get what i'm trying to say so they had the led screens where you could see the menu because we probably spent probably a good 10 minutes just figuring out 10 15 minutes just figuring out what we wanted to order as we were cramped while we were waiting because we did have to wait a little bit in order to order the food in the first place how long we wait about 10 minutes um yeah yeah 10 minutes 15 minutes right yeah okay i mean you know that's not too too bad but they probably want would want to come up with a system where it'd be easier to order um, that way it can kind of start on the food to kind of make the overall experience well i got better. i got the impression um I might be jumping ahead a little, but as we were sitting down and stuff after we ordered our food, I saw a lot of people walking in to come in to pick up their orders. So I guess probably over the phone orders. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, even even people that are just coming in and walking in. Yeah. You know, you kind of want to make the experience a little easier for them, too. Yeah. You know, what I mean, you know? see that that's that's probably the disadvantage of of having such a, a small space mm-hmm. because. When you look at some of these other uh, restaurants that they offer takeout, they usually have a space that's specifically allocated just for pickup. Mm. But you can't do that in that in that place. Exactly. You got, and that's actually a great. I think that'd be a, a huge asset to them. Have a little pickup window or something like that. But when we got there, it was only like maybe two people that were there. It was one person that was looked like they were doing all the cooking, and another person was at the register. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, you know, two people can only do so much. You know, pick up window with two people. <laughs> one person running from window to window. I mean, you know. Yeah. But uh, but that was pretty much, you know, uh, my assessment of the, the initial entry of the building. But then you get to the dining room, just like I described it tapestries little pictures and things like that they had a bathroom that was there i didn't go in the bathroom in order to be able to talk about that but um the dining room was pretty comfortable looking kind of reminded you of somebody living room which is pretty cool i like that you know i don't, I don't know how many people would it's 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 homey it kind of gives you like a homey kind of feeling you know like you you know 
Yeah. I mean, some people might want things a little bit more formal, but for me, that made me feel comfortable. Yeah, like I, I, I had no dinner. problems with the dining area. The dining area was cool. Yeah, for sure. Given the fact that it, it looked like it was mostly, the place was mostly designed for takeout, the fact that they made a little dining area, it was, it was all right. It, yeah. was, it was sufficient. Yeah, super cool. I ain't mad at it. So, uh, you know, with all that being said, let's go ahead and move on to the, the next phase of it, which is uh, pretty much like the service, like the structure. We touched on that a little bit when we were talking about uh, um, the, you know, just how they were doing the ordering. Everybody kind of had to wait whether you whether you were picking up or whether you were placing order for the first time. You're in the same line and you're kind of waiting, 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 waiting to order slash pick up. You know what I mean? <laughs> So, like, the structure of it, like, how they they do the business, you know yeah. what I mean? Just touch on that a little bit more, because we already talked about it. As far as the customer service? Well, well we ain't getting into that yet. Yeah, that's, that's the next topic. topic. But, but this, just the, the service part of it, you know what I mean? Service. Like, uh, like uh, you know, like the, the infrastructure of getting the process of ordering your food to getting your food, that, that, that process. It could be worked on. It could be worked on? Talk about it's it. Not, it's not Chick-fil-A. You know, <laughs> it ain't Chick Fil A. There's a lot of what they, what you would what in business they would call uh, bottlenecks, things that will slow down the overall process of delivering the food to the the end user to the customer. Mm-hmm. Um, there are things that they can work on, but mm-hmm. it's the space that's the biggest issue. Mm-hmm. Well, I think even with that space, they could have been just a little bit more efficient with how the ordering process to, you know, getting the food to everything, you know, yeah, with the order been smoother. With the ordering process, there was no way to to like tell the difference between a phone order or somebody walking in or somebody waiting for food. Mm -hmm. It's like everybody's just there, just standing there. So Mm -hmm. we're like, where's the line? Also, one thing I noticed, too, is when you place an order, it's like they didn't have a system where they were you would pick up your order. Like nobody took my name. Yeah, no number. No receipt. I didn't, you know, nothing. It was just kind of like it was basically the girl going off her own memory as to maybe she called out the food. She was like, you know, jerk. But what if somebody else ordered that? Yeah, you know, but, it would kind of be some of an issue. I don't, I don't know if they just didn't use it at that, that point. Know, or... It's it's all right if you don't have that much customers um, in the building at the same time. If you have, like, maybe two or three people, then you can remember what they ordered. Mm. Um, but if, say, for instance, ten people come in at one time, you're going to have some problems. <laughs> yeah, big problems. You know, so... I think their their systems need to be reevaluated. I think so. I mean, it wasn't bad though. P. Let's not make it seem like it was bad. It wasn't bad. It it was for me. I felt like it was a t- it was typical of a Caribbean restaurant. But then you know that's so exactly what we want to get away from. We want to get yeah. away from the typical Caribbean service. We wanna we wanna be better. We wanna exceed those standards and take it to the next level yeah. and be on equal footing with every other kind of restaurant there is you know what i mean yeah so you know it could definitely use some work to me it wasn't the worst kind of service that you would get at a you know it wasn't typical caribbean service because yeah. typical caribbean service is you walk up there you wait in 20 minutes first of all no you walk into the you walk into the <laughs> restaurant nobody's at the goddamn counter taking orders you wait 20 minutes for dude to come out of the back and then you place your order and he tells you everything that he doesn't have. Oh, got it. We'll have that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's you know, that's the stereotypical Caribbean service that you would normally get. It was, it was, a, it was a long way from that. It was a long, long, long way from that. Um, but as for the capacity of um, the service structure, you know, you know, getting the food and everything like that, it definitely could have used some work. Um, how about how about the time it took to get the food? How long did you have to wait for your food, P? I don't think it took too long to get the food. Um, I mean, considering everything was fresh too, on top of that. Yeah, and that, that's one thing. Like, um, I don't think it took too long. Like, it probably took like maybe a little bit less than ten minutes. By the way, P got his food before me, so <laughs> <laughs> so P's experience is a little bit different in this aspect than mine. But go ahead, P. Go ahead. 
But I mean, as I was sitting down, you know, there were there were fulfilling orders. So there were people coming in and people coming out. So they were pumping out the food pretty quickly, given the fact that there was one person at the register and then there was one person that was cooking everything. By the way, the cook looked kind of good. She was kind of pretty. Both, I think both of the women they were did. pretty. Both of them were pretty, though. You know? Yeah. So they had they had a total of... They looked mean as hell, though. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they did. They looked like too many dudes walking there and try to try to suit their shot. And they just... Yeah. They don't want to give nobody no kind of impression that anything else is going on other than this food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's very true. <laughs> but go ahead with you said. Uh, but I think by the time we sat down, there were a total of like four employees. So you have one person at the register, one person like cooking the food, one person preparing the food, Prepping, yeah. and then you had somebody that was like cleaning the dishes and stuff like that. Mm. So, a little I mean, system worked out. Yeah. yeah. So, so I didn't wait too long. You waited a little. You waited a little longer. I waited but, a lot longer. But you ordered <laughs> more than me though. I did order more. I did order more. I won't refute that at and all. And you went and after you made your first order, you went back and added on to your order. That's also true as well. That's also true as well. And you know what? The, you know what? For that kind of food, especially food that they're making fresh, I didn't wait super long. I didn't wait hours or anything like that. I said I probably waited about a good twenty minutes though. Yeah. 20 or 25 minutes but that's pretty typical if you were going to a restaurant and you were ordering food you're gonna wait about 20 minutes for your food yeah if you went to red lobster you went to fridays or something like that you're gonna be waiting yeah. about 20 minutes okay you're not gonna complain or blink twice about it yeah you know what i mean um you know you might be a little bit more comfortable in their restaurant because just keeping keeping mind that yeah like you said before it's fresh fresh this is not this is not something they just throw in the microwave or something like that or you know it's already it was frozen and it is heated and give it to you. No, it's it's fresh. Fresh. Yeah. Fresh. Yeah, you gotta say it like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Gotta say it like that. Yeah, yeah. But all in all, man, I mean, um, you know, um, service structure could use a little bit of work, but all in all, it was pretty good service that we got. And yeah. they have a pretty good system worked out. Just little tweaks here and there. Mm hmm. But anyway, let's go ahead and move on to the next topic. And we kind of touched on it a little bit, and that's the customer service um, that we got. Uh, it was pretty much one girl we were dealing with. Um, you know, the other girl was in the back cooking. We just got to look at her. But, uh, Focused. Whipping, but how, whipping, well, whipping, whipping, whipping the pots. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, how did you feel about the girl? How did you feel about the person working the register? Like, what was, what was your impression of her? I mean, you know... She Outside was she was it. she was there. You know, I don't go there I don't go there for personality. I go there to get my order taken. So it w it was dry. She was like, "Next. <laughs> what do you want?" And I, I you know, I gave her my order. And that was pretty much it. There was no like you know, "My pleasure." Or "Would you like to would you like to add such and such?" You know, like Mm -hmm. upselling or you know trying to add additional things there was none of that it was like okay next this is what you want all right it's gonna be well she didn't even tell me she didn't tell me how long it was gonna be she's like okay it was gonna be i don't think she even said how much it was gonna be actually uh, she didn't say how not much until she be. took the order and we actually put, we actually got the food then she came up with how much it was gonna be but i would have i would have had liked it to know before i got the food how much it was gonna be yeah, i had a good idea in my head was, but still yeah you know, sometimes them taxes be sneaking up on your ass. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, that can that can be improved. Mm -hmm. But the, you know, your overall but impression of her mean, service. She wasn't mean or anything. It's just that, you know, it was she was kind of dry. Mm -hmm. But, you know. And I could kind of understand. You know what I mean? We, we're talking about a Tuesday at yeah. maybe like 7 o'clock p.m. in the evening. Yeah. She probably was ready to go home. She was tired. Feet probably yeah. hurt. Probably had to go home, pick up her kid from school. Or, you know what I mean? Like, life kind of plays I, a role. I wasn't, I wasn't offended, you know. Like, you know, you know, keep in mind, you know, we, we did customer service before, man. We worked at Sears a long time ago. So we know how it is. When well, you're yeah. dealing with a lot of people, me, personally, once I, I was a salesman, once I met my quota, I didn't want to help nobody. <laughs> I would disappear. So. Oh, Lord. Okay. Yeah. It was it. Like that, huh? 
<laughs> Listen, you know, I, customer service is, it's not a huge deal for me, but I know that it's a big deal for a lot of people. Yeah. A lot of people, people go certain, certain places specifically, specifically for customer service. service. Look at Starbucks. Yeah. I mean, what the fuck is so special about Starbucks? Their coffee is not that good. You know what I mean? I could probably make better coffee at my house. You know what I mean? Really, in all reality. They don't serve no real food. The shit is overpriced. You know what I mean? Yeah, like food is, yeah, everything is definitely Everything's overpriced. overpriced. What the what the hell is so special about them? You know what I mean? But but one thing that you can always you're always gonna get every time you walk into a Starbucks is great, awesome customer service. Okay? So Customer service. Not if is, not if you were those black guys that was up in like Philadelphia. Oh yeah. If, if you're if you're black, then I mean, then that's different. <laughs> but that's for everything, though. You yeah. know what I mean? But in, in general, when they're dealing with their own, you know, white, white people, people, the, the customer, customer service, service is always going to be on point. It's Chick-fil-A always going to be accurate. Example. Chick-fil-A is a great example. But you know what? Chick-fil-A <laughs> happens to be. You know, an example. Great food, great service, yeah. all the way around. The line, if you go through the drive-through, the line could be wrapped around the block. Yeah, that's the quickest line that will go through. But if you know what? But nowadays, in 2019, if you look at all the biggest companies out there, the companies that are doing the best, they're all famous for their customer service. Yeah, Apple. I mean, you know, I you know, I, I have an iPhone myself, but I mean, what's so real? What's so what's so special about an iPhone, really? I ask that question okay, all the time. He's gonna talk shit now. I kind of I kind of opened it up for him to talk shit about what, it, but what still, it really is special about an iPhone. I mean, man. but the service that you get when you go into an Apple store, when you go when you call Apple customer service support, the service that you get when you call Apple is always gonna be top notch, yay or nay. Hey, well, I mean, the amount of money you're spending, it better be. <laughs> it better be. Hey, it, 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 but I get me some yeah. good-ass customer service. Look at Discover. Discover, Discover has, has good, good customer, customer service. service. You, you know, know what I mean? They, they got, got high-ass fees for every damn thing, but, but they, they got, got good customer service. service. Look okay. at uh, Discover's probably not that good of an example, but still. Um, look at, uh, uh, you said Chick-fil-A. Look at, uh, what would be another business? A good example of some good ass customer service. I'm trying to think of a phone company, but they all kind of trash, really. Yeah. Anyway, the moral of the story is the biggest companies usually have uh, a, a high regard for instilling really good customer service into their employees. They make it a priority. For people to have good customer service so even though this girl wasn't rude you know she wasn't nasty it wasn't outstanding customer service that would make me say huh let me go back I had a really wonderful experience when I went to coconuts yeah but then at the same time my experience with the customer service isn't enough to to make me not go back. I mean, if your food is trash, then nobody's yeah. fucking with you. I don't care how nice you are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, I've uh, I've had a, a, a bad experience at a previous, at another restaurant, which they're not open anymore. It's the Bahamian restaurant that um, I used to go to. <laughs> oh, and I ordered my food. And, you know, I ordered my food over the phone because I knew by the time it take me to get there, it's going to take me about 20 minutes to get there. So by the time I get there, the food will be ready. The place closed at 10 o'clock p.m. Mm. I called at 9. I left at 10.50. Damn. That's bad. You know what? I actually had a similar experience <laughs> at that same Bohemian restaurant. So I'm I know like, exactly what you're talking about. The- what the heck? Like, I ordered my food. Not ready, not ready, not ready. They forgot about my order. Even though I came there, mm. I paid them, mm. and I was just sitting there like, what the heck is going on? They done closed up and everything. They're like, oh, we forgot to give you. <laughs> they closed up. They done locked you in the damn store. Like, we forgot to give you your food. Like, yeah. oh. I'm like, duh. Yeah. You know? So. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. bad. I still went back though, cause Uh-oh. that food was good. Oh, the food was good. Once, you, once you got the shit, shit three hours was later, it was yeah. good. Huh? They're like, you know, oh, you know, we're so sorry. We'll give you a slice of cake and stuff like that. I'm like, oh, you think that's enough to to make it all right that I waited all this time? 
in my head, yeah, but you know, still. But you know what that goes to that show you though, if your product is good enough, you can get away with shit. But you know that that goes with a lot, you know that you know that that says a lot of stuff. I mean, shit, if you fuck a girl good enough, she'll put up with a lot of shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I yeah. mean, if if you did gaming all there, yeah, you better have all that other shit together. But you know what I mean? at the same time, you know, like if I'm hungry and I'm thinking about what I want to eat, you know, if I know it's gonna take that long, then I might not pick them at that time you know i'll go i'll come back eventually but mm. they probably would have made more money if their service was faster mm. you know okay. so i know the food is quick i know they're gonna come out with the food quick so let me just go there mm. or versus dang they're gonna take about 40 40 minutes to an hour to give me the food no nah, that's too long mm. i'm hungry now yeah, no, nah, that don't make no damn sense. If you if you know you trying to get some food on the way to work and you know it take an hour, yeah, your ass ain't ordering from there, and you losing out on business if you're the Bahamian place. But anyway, we talking about coconuts. How the hell are we talking about this Bahamian restaurant now? <laughs> anyway, we talking about coconuts and we talking about their service, their customer service skills. So, like on a scale of one to ten, what would you give the customer service to? Uh, six. No, no, well, I mean, on one to ten. It wasn't bad. I mean, six, six and a half. Service was very forgettable. Definitely. Yeah. Five, six, definitely in that range. Um, she, she took our order. She was efficient with what she did. Um, but there was no extra extra pizzazz, no enthusiasm, no warm welcome, no friendly friendliness. You know what I mean? No recommendations. Nothing to give somebody the incentive to uh, want to go back. You know what I mean? As far as the service is concerned. You know what I mean? So, yeah, six or seven, that's about accurate. You know what I'm saying? All right, so anyway, moving on to the next topic. With all that being said, let's get on to the, the, the best part of a review, especially a review that's about food. Let's talk about the product, which is the food. Mm. P, you want to hit on this first, or you want me to hit on this first? What you want me to do? Uh, well, I mean, I, I could go because, I mean, I got my food before you. So. Yeah, so he sure as hell did while he was killing his shit. I'm over here looking lonely and hungry and shit. But go ahead. Go ahead, Pete. Talk about the food. Well, Break it down into categories. I ordered the uh, the brown stew chicken with the rice and peas. Uh, it came with some uh, small salad as well. And the food was good. It was food was excellent. Mm. You know, different Caribbean uh countries they have their own variations of how they make uh, rice and peas and stuff like that so i'm used to i'm used to eating it in many different ways so the way that they made it i can tell that they used a little bit of coconut milk in it but um it was i enjoyed it the rice was was cooked completely and it was fluffy it was light and fluffy the the chicken was tender it wasn't dry it was so tender that the meat Literally, it came off of the bone with when I used my fork, like just came right off. In which that was good. It had flavor, like it was marinating and seasoning. In which I really enjoyed that. You know, I I go to some places, for example, Pollo Tropical, which I, I their chicken is always hit or miss. They don't season their their uh their chicken a lot of times, and you have to put a whole bunch of things on it. you got to put hot sauce on it you got to put salt on it because they don't they just they just clean the chicken and put it on the ground that's it they don't throw no seasoning they season it with the mist mm. like lemon like they, they might spray some lemon like like that yeah so i mean it was really it was really good i enjoyed the food I, and you know well, let's talk about See, each 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 part of the food you had individually we want to get down in there we want to get to the gristle. I mean, the <laughs> so like the chicken, you, you talked about the chicken, chicken, the brown stew chicken. The How chicken about the rice fall and off the, Fall off the bone chicken. So the fall rice. off the bone. Yeah, it was very tender, very flavorful. Mm. You know, I'm hungry uh, now. Getting home. The rice was well done, like it was cooked fully. Okay. You know, a lot. Some places the they undercook the rice where it's hard <laughs> or it's too mushy, but the rice was done perfectly. Um, it was light and fluffy, mm. and it was flavorful. I can taste the hint of coconut in it. It was mm. really good. I enjoyed it. I also tasted a, 
I can tell they also used um, clove mm. as well. Okay. So, it's really good. Okay. Well, talk about this too, because they had their own like custom, custom juice in there. Oh, I had a I had a pineapple ginger juice. Okay. How was that? It was all right. It wasn't bad. Um, other places where I've had pineapple ginger juice, like uh, I like when I when I have that, I like to get the ginger. I want it to be a little bit more potent. Their variation of it, it was a little bit diluted, like watered down. But I mean, it was still good. But I've had better. Mm. Okay. Yeah. All in all, good juice, good food. Yeah, the juice was the juice was good. You know. Okay. Okay. Could have been better, but I mean, you know, Dang. it was the juice was good. It was good. Right. I, I would drink it again. Okay. But I, I've had better. Oh, more Jesus. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, okay. But the food was really good, though. Food was good. Yeah. On point. On a scale of one to ten, how you rate this food? One to ten, I would I would give it a a strong a strong nine. Ooh, nine is good as hell. Yeah. Okay. One thing. Well thing that I, I can't give it a 10 is because I feel like they should have uh, gave me plantains. Mm. That should have came with it. Mm. That shouldn't have been something that, you know, oh, you want to add on? No. I'm used to, when I go to Caribbean restaurants, I'm used to having that. You know what, Pete? That's one thing we didn't talk about. We didn't talk about the price. You know what I'm saying? We got to talk about that. So hold on. Let's just segue. Let's segue from this for a second. Let's talk about the price, okay? Because, you know, some people might not be able to afford this shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Maybe so we need to give them a realistic idea as to how much it costs to eat at coconuts in Miramar. Well, so how much was your how much was your meal? Um, I think altogether mine was like maybe twelve dollars or something like that. Twelve dollars? Either, either twelve or fourteen. It was no higher than fourteen. Okay. So twelve to fourteen dollars for pizza. It could have been it could have been cheaper. Okay. Um, but I mean that that was that was all right. Is that right? Uh-huh. Pete said it was it, right. I mean, it, it, it could have been cheaper. The food was good. So that saved them. So we got nine category food, and P paid by $14 for his food. So P's assessment. I think, I think probably because I got the drink, that would make, that's what made it like $14. They tend, they tend to charge like two ninety nine or something like that for those type of drinks. Yeah, so, you're right about that. You know, they always tax with drinks. Oh, so, definitely be taxing that ass. That's that's drinks sure. <laughs> should be no more than a dollar fifty. Yeah, they expensive to make though, because they be making them fresh with fruit and yeah, you know I mean, and yeah. it's expensive as hell. Yeah, yeah, but you know, Jamaicans be overcharging anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me go ahead and get to my food. P over here eating. He's over there living the, the lavish life. Well, I'm still waiting on my food. So, like, man, you ain't get your food yet. Uh, yeah, I feel sorry for you, man, but you know, like, hey, it's what it is. I'm growling. I'm out here looking like a homeless dude out here. You know, what I mean, with a sign up. You know, we'll work for food <laughs> while P is over there grubbing. So anyway, I get my food about 25 minutes or whatever. Uh, so what I ordered was I ordered the jerk salmon with white rice, plantains, and uh, vegetables. Okay. So first, let me let me talk about the price a little bit before I get to the food. So I spent about twenty five dollars on my food. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which is like okay, twenty five dollars. That's kind of a lot. You know what I mean? Um, you know, I mean, I'm a little bougie with my food. I mean, I got salmon. I ain't getting no regular shit. I got salmon. You know, that's for people that got money. You know what I mean? Uh, but I got salmon or whatnot. And um, and one thing that I noticed early on is is they they charge for like you know things that they consider sides but normal jamaican food places wouldn't really consider them sides you know what i mean like if you go to a regular jamaican food place you know you order oxtail with rice and beans it normally come with a side of plantain and maybe some cabbage or veggies that might come with it yeah you know what i mean so all together you spend it maybe about 13 14 dollars or whatever if you get oxtails and that's probably gonna be a little bit more but at this place they have like a two dollar upcharge for the size so i got the salmon that by itself was maybe about 15 16 dollars well sorry to interrupt no go ahead did you pay with the card 
I did pay with the car. Okay, that's something else that I noticed is that they also give you a discount. Uh, I don't I don't remember what percentage, but they give you a discount if you pay in cash versus mm. paying with the card. Ah, so did you pay cash? I paid with the card. Oh, so okay. it might have been, you know, maybe a couple cents cheaper if I would have paid with cash. I mean, you know, I mean, you know, I, you know, I don't know how much cheaper that discount would have been. Not significant, probably, but I mean, it'll knock some change off, you know. 63 cents difference, whatever. If I'm paying $25, I'm paying $25, God damn it. I see the charge on my credit card statement. It's $25. Anyway, aside from all that. So, you know, there was like a $2 upcharge for each side that I added to the salmon. You know what I mean? So $2, I wanted some planting. So I had to pay extra $2 for planting. I wanted some veggies. I had to pay extra $2 for veggies. So I'm up to about $20 now at this point. You know what I mean? Because it's already about $16. I'm at like $21. And then I want to get a drink. You know what I'm saying? And the drink, I think I got, what did I get? You remember what I got, P? I got like a strawberry mango or something. Yeah, something like that. I think I got like a strawberry mango or whatever. You know, and that, that was probably wild, just like Pete said. Wildberry lemonade or something like that. Oh, yeah. No, I got a lemonade. I got a raspberry lemonade. Not a. See, I'm over here thinking about something else. I got a raspberry lemonade, and it kind of pretty much tasted like the Publix white raspberry lemonade, really. <laughs> That's what you got. <laughs> <laughs> like the shit you get at Publix that they make. But, you know, I digress. You know what I mean? It is what it is. And I'm pretty sure there was like a three dollar charge for that. So anyway, so I get I pay for the food or whatever because only at the time that you, you know, you pick up the food do you find out how much everything costs. At that point, they have the menu and the prices up. So I mean, you can pretty much surmise how much everything is going to be in general before you pay for it. But it would have been nice to get the subtotal prior to getting the food. But anyway. So I get the food, I pay for the food, I take the food, and we go to the, the little dining area and we go to go eat the food. Now, let's talk about the food, you know what I mean? Because I know y'all anxious to hear about the food. That's, that's juicy. That is. That is. Mm. Okay. I'm a believer. Let's taste the veggies real fast. Fresh. Taste the flame. Yeah. So I'll start with the rice first. Rice was very well cooked. Fluffy, just as P said, white rice. You know what I mean? Probably as good as you can make it. You know what I mean? Uh, so definitely 100% on point. Then I had the veggies. We'll talk about the veggies. The veggies, super fresh, super clean, super everything. You know what I mean? The veggies were, you know, they were great. They were super on point. You know what I mean? And, and super light and easy. Not so much. If you're one of those people who don't like your food mixing in together. And I know there's a lot of weirdos out there like that. You don't like your food touching. You would have loved this because the veggies didn't have an ounce of gravy from anything, any other part of the food. Which was, you know, like I said, if you're a weirdo like that, you like that shit. But so the veggies were good. And then I had a side of plantain. You know what I mean? The plantain was good. Plantain was very, came like it came off of very ripe banana. You know what I mean? Very sweet. Delicious. And then there's the salmon. The salmon was really, really, really damn good. It was very good. Um, very juicy. Very supple. Uh, how, tender, how tender was very it? Very tender. Very tender. And they gave me a nice big piece of it. You know what I mean? They wasn't they wasn't yeah. shy about the portions. When I saw when you lift up the lid and I saw that uh, salmon, I was like, dang, that looks that looks seasoned. It was they seasoned the <laughs> hell out of that damn salmon. You know what I mean? To tell you the truth, to tell you the truth, it was seasoned very well. But you know, it, it was kind of seasoned a little bit too much for me. I'm gonna say, you know what I'm saying? It had a little bit too much spice. And anytime you order jerk. 
You know, that's always going to be a common thing. I, I like Jerk spicy is going to be food. spicy. I like spicy food too, but it kind of seemed like it was just a little bit like, all right, a little bit too much bite in there. You know what I mean? So um, everything was excellent all in all. I enjoyed the food. Um, but that was probably like the main takeaway that I would get from it was that they overdid it a little bit with the spice and to each his own. You know, that was just me with it. Um, but it was excellent food. Great. You should have got the other. Um, I think they had another uh, spice that you could have got. I think it was like mango something mango habanero or something like that that you could have. Mango habanero. Oh, I yeah, got something that like that. Time. I think you could have gotten that instead of the regular jerk uh, spice. Okay. Well, I mean, we definitely got to try that. You know what I mean? A mango habanero. All right. I ain't got no, ain't got no problem with that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I mean, everything all in all, man, I mean, it was great. Um, you know, and then I had the side of the raspberry lemonade. I already described that. It tastes like the Publix lemonade. And Publix lemonade is good. You know, they sell a lot of them. But, I mean, it wasn't anything original. It was just something to kind of quench quench the thirst. And, um, you know, we got it down. So, all in all, if I had to give my overall assessment of the food i would say that it's a strong i want to say eight and a half okay. out of ten right. you know what i mean as far as the food is concerned you know they overdid a little bit with the spice too you know otherwise they probably would have got a nine and a half mm -hmm. uh, but an eight and a half out of ten really 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 good food i enjoyed myself man you know what i mean mm -hmm. very very i'm getting hungry just thinking about this shit. i might go there right now god damn it but anyway <laughs> Aside from that, uh, that is our assessment of the food. Uh, next thing we want to talk about is the portions of the food. Uh, P, were you full after you ate? Like, how, how did you feel after that? They, they, did they? It was a decent. Look was, out for you. It was a decent portion. Decent uh, portion. I feel like if I would have had the plantains on the side, then I would have been like full, full. But I was. You ain't spend twenty dollars like me. You yeah, wasn't shooting yeah. in the gym. <laughs> I was full. I was full, but I had a little bit. I had a little bit more space in my stomach. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it was. It was. By the way, Pete fucked his food up. Yeah, <laughs> like that shit was gone. <laughs> and as you can see, I actually got pictures of it that you guys are gonna see in the video of the plates. The end result <laughs> of what the hell happened after we went there. You know what I mean? But yeah. But I mean, you were still full afterwards. You could tell because yeah, I mean, he ate cool. all the damn rice grains up out of there. <laughs> <laughs> wasn't even no rice grains left in the goddamn. <laughs> Listen, man, if I would have had like bread or something, <laughs> there would have been no sauce. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious! Uh, I, you know, as for me, as far bad. as the portions concerned. Because P thought it was a, I thought it was a really good portion. It should have been a really good portion for me as much sure. fucking money as I spent. Yeah. Goddamn car note on food. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, that's not expensive. I'm just talking shit. But, um, but yeah, my portions was good. I had the plants and I had the veggies. I had the white rice and the salmon. All went really good together, and it made for a really good portion. Um, I don't think that it should. I do feel like it was a little overpriced. Yeah. Um, I don't think it should have been that much. You know what I mean? I didn't order no damn ribeye steak or anything like that. You know what yeah. I mean? So I think it probably maybe $18. I should have probably paid for everything. Not so much $25, close to $30 for it. Yeah. Um, that, was, that was a little bit over the top. Yeah, I think so. I think so, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? But it was a good portion size considering, even though. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, I mean, with all that being said, um, we... Did you finish your food, P? Well, that goes without saying. Yeah, I already I, answered I that devoured, question. I devoured He fucked his food up. But I also finished my food, despite, you know, how big the portion was. And you guys are going to be able to see how much food it was all together. Um, but despite the portion size, man, I fucked my food up. It was, gun it was done. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there was, it wasn't no taking none home. There wasn't no saving none for later. None of that shit. I fucked it all up. I was hungry. You know what I mean? So, you know, we definitely finished the food. All right. All right, so with that being said, on to the next part of it, which is, would you go back? Would you go back there, P? Yes, I, I would go back. 100%. Yeah. Definitely go back. I want to try other, the other stuff on the menu. I'm so, definitely a regular I'll, customer at this point. Yeah, I'll definitely go back. Now, um, I wish that, you know, their website is good. 
I wish that they would add online ordering. But then given the space of the kitchen and stuff, I don't know if they would be able to handle that added capacity. Mm-hmm. Very interesting shit we're talking about here. Yeah. But that, that, that's going to be part of what we're going to talk about in a little bit, which is the opportunity for growth. Yeah. But before we get there, before we get there, because P always be jumping ahead and shit. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I just be real voice walking sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> which is cool, which is cool. But let me answer that Dr. question first. Dr. Boyce Watkins. Let me correct that. Would I go back? Hell yeah, I would go back, man. It's becoming one of my regular spots. You know, it might be like a Monday thing or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> but it's definitely good food, decent service, um, and it's not too far away from the crib, too. So, you know, yeah, that always works. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want to travel a million miles for no damn food. Yeah. But anyway, on to the next topic, which happens to be a very important part of these reviews. Um, the community impact. What is coconuts contributing to the community? What that, kind of I mean, impact do they have? Have you been able to see anything? Know anything? Do anything? I mean, to be honest with you, the place is on 441. So 441 is not known to be an, a beautiful place. And keep in mind, um, FDOT, which is Florida Department of Transportation, they've been doing a conversion on, floor, on 441 for years. For, it seems like since the beginning of time, it's still not done yet. Um, Damn. But with that conversion, they've actually shrinking the retail space, shrunken the retail space. He said shrinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah correct me. <laughs> shrunken the I'm retail space. I'm not the only space, one fucking up. You know. So, yeah, I mean, 441, it's, it's you know, it's 441. It is 441, I mean, but do you feel like they do anything to represent the community, the black community? Do you feel like they're, at this point, at all involved in any kind of community development? Well, that I don't, I don't, I don't know if they're a part of anything. Um, I haven't looked to see if they were a part of anything as well, so... Mm -hmm. um, I really couldn't answer that <laughs> fully. But I feel like um, I feel like our black-owned businesses, it, it, we should make our community development aspirations like known. That should be a part of what you get when you walk into a coconuts, whatever their community aspirations are. You know. Well, but I think I think um, you go in McDonald's, they got all these the names of all these scammy ass foundations that they support and all this old bullshit. Yeah. So. But I, I think I think in businesses coming into the community, period, I think we as a people, like, in our communities, we need to come together and we need to say to these businesses, you know, before you come here, we require that you invest into our community, not just having a, a, a building and having a low-paying job there. We need you to invest in our community. You know, you need to sponsor a, a, a kid's youth team or a, whatever extracurricular activity, whether they want to go to the library or whatever. You need to sponsor events uh, catered towards the youth or different type of educational programs in our community, not just have a building there and you serve us a product. Because a lot of times these businesses come, the, the owners, they don't live in our community but they come, they take the money, and they, they go spend the money somewhere else. So we need to have them invest in our community. That, some of that money needs to come back into the community. So I think that's a, that should be a requirement that we have of all businesses, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Definitely should be a requirement of our businesses. And, uh... You know, in this particular case with coconuts, we didn't really look into their community outreach um, to per se be able to speak on it. You know, what I mean, we 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 like to be transparent and 100 percent honest about everything that we do. And it just hadn't gotten to the point yet with like that with coconuts where we were able to see. Uh, but again, stuff like that should be out there when i walk into your restaurant your store i should know what what your plans are for the community that you that you're in you know what i mean immediately yeah. so 
you know, those are just my thoughts on it. But I mean, maybe in a little bit we'll do maybe a continuation. We had coconuts again. Maybe we'll do like a part two or another review where we talk a little bit about uh, you know, the community outreach for coconuts. Uh, you know, what I mean, like a, a continued version. What would be like the word for that? Like a. What's a continuation? I want to say like after after the review or something. Yeah, you just yeah. After the review, that sounds like some good shit. I don't know, but yeah, something like that. All right. So on to the very last topic for tonight's review of coconuts in Miramar. Let's talk about the opportunity for growth. So this topic alone, we could probably take up a whole hour, but we're not. Yeah. But let's touch let's touch on a few things that they could do to kind of better themselves as a business. All right. What did you see that you would have liked to be done differently for coconuts in Miramar? Um, well, we're not really I mean, done differently, should I say, but there, like, there are, they can improve on. There are, there are a lot of things that they did right. Um, I like their website. The website is clean. Uh, it's it's mobile enabled. It's mobile optimized. Um, I would like to see them have online ordering. Um, you really can't do too much with that space because it's very small. So any type of remodeling inside would probably take a lot of like the dining room area. Even if they wanted to move the kitchen around, I don't even think they could because the kitchen is bigger than the dining area, but the kitchen is small itself. So I don't know if they might be like, they should be thinking to at, at least relocate to another area nearby that's that's bigger. But then I don't know, you know, I don't know the financials of it. Like, you know, how much are they paying for rent? You know, how much do they pay? How much do they pay their employees? You know, what's the, you know, what are the cost of, of the the supplies, all of the food and stuff that they, they, they order? Like, I don't really know what their break even is, but I mean, they, they, there are things that they can improve. I mean, outside of digging into their finance, financials for the most part, because, you know, even the cost of switching locations and maybe upgrading a location it does greatly affect their overhead and kind of puts them into a new category of expense um but aside from that you know what i mean um like what did you like okay let's go through each category and talk about which thing like what do you think they can improve on you know what i mean and, and let's try to make it as cost effective as possible because you know everything co when you do anything for business it costs it's like 10 times more than it would cost for like a regular person. Mm -hmm. Like just throw commercial in the conversation and it's 10 times the price. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like if you wanted to build a single family house, you'd probably do it for like 250, 300,000. If you wanted to build a commercial building, easily a million dollars. You know what I mean? Like yeah. just for the building, you know what I mean? Same height, same size as the single family, same everything as the single family, but it's a commercial property. Different Easily a million dollars. Different standards, different materials. Everything different. So with that being said, we're going to try to be as cost as effective as possible. So let's talk about the exterior part of it. What do you think they could use some, some you know, what could they improve on exterior wise and not spend too much money? Uh, the, uh, the additional parking, they could have that area paved. Mm -hmm. They can add some plants to enhance the overall appearance mm -hmm. the parking in front of the uh the building they could also improve the surface like resurface that area i just i can imagine that when it rains there'll probably be a bunch of potholes everywhere and it'll be susceptible to flooding in that area i wouldn't want to park in that additional parking lot after it rained because mm -hmm. then you're gonna you, you get out your car you stepping in all that 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 mud and all that it's they could they could redo that mm -hmm. but also in addition to that I, I noticed you know on the exterior side there's signage they don't really have much signage like what when have? i when i was looking for the place i drove by it because i couldn't a... i didn't see any real sign that said 
you yeah, know what I mean? mean coconuts. Yeah, you know what I mean? They have a banner on top of the. I mean, uh, they the have building. a banner, but the banner is like faded yeah, out. It's like red. you can almost not see it. Like I didn't when I drove by it, I didn't see it. I'm like, oh, oh okay, that's what I'm looking for. You know what I mean? So. I think for on my end they can add some signage, something that would make them a little bit more visible to people that are that's driving by. Well, they could definitely pave the the parking lot. Especially when it get dark, they could have something that light up. Yeah, maybe something, something like that. that. And, and definitely, definitely, um, I don't know about that yellow. How you feel about the yellow? I mean, it makes it stand out. It does make it stand out. The yellow makes it stand out. All right, we'll give them that. The yellow does make it stand out. And how about on the inside of the building? What could they do? It's small. Small. You can't I mean, do nothing about small, small, though. What would you do with the furniture? What would you do to make it a little bit more feng shui? Like, the what floor, could that well, the floor, for? I would change the flooring to, like, a, a wood type of floor. Okay. Um, the the painting, I mean, the, the pictures on the wall, there was nothing wrong with that. Um, the dining area wasn't really that bad. But okay. the floor, I would change the wood on the floor. Um, there's really nowhere else you can place those refrigerators. They have refrigerators where they have all the drinks and stuff. But the place is so small, you can't put those anywhere else. To be honest with you, they they should put a they should put some drywall to cover that part of the kitchen where you, as soon as you walk into the door, you look to your right side. You know, part of that is exposed to go into the kitchen. They should cover that up. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I think that they, um, as far as the inside of the building, they could probably use a, a little paint job in there. Yeah. Um, they could probably paint the walls in there. New flooring would definitely make the mood set the mood a little nicer, you know what I mean? Um, they have actually tile in the in the dining area, so I like the idea of having wood flooring, you know, maybe like a nice little gloss finish or something like that on there. Which would be pretty nice. Um, they could probably upgrade their tables yeah. uh, too. Maybe get some nicer tables and chairs. Maybe put some sort of music in there. That's the other thing. Was it? They had a small. They had a small TV, like a yeah. twenty-inch TV. Yeah, and it was like random shows playing. Like it was like Seinfeld or some shit or something that was on at the time we were eating. And yeah, I mean it was kind of cool, but at the same time you're like, uh, why the fuck is Seinfeld on? You know, put some music on, some vibes. I had no problem with Seinfeld. Seinfeld funny, man. I don't think was it. I don't know. It wasn't Seinfeld. It was, it was something Seinfeld. else. It was some other shit. Anyway, aside from that, when I, I'm not going to no Jamaican food restaurant to watch Seinfeld. Okay, I want I want to go there. <clears throat> this is some Jake, Jamaican food restaurant. I'm chilling, eating damn jerk chicken. So, you know, they could do uh, some things to the in, the interior and stuff like that. Um, we can't really dig into the finances so much, but. Seeing how they have been around 10 years, do you think maybe they should maybe put in another location somewhere yeah, else? definitely. They could go. That's that's on 441, so that's on the border of Miramar. They have to be profitable at this point, so. Yeah, but they could go more towards the center, towards more closer towards university. Because, hmm. I mean, you... That's on the border of 441. Across the street, what is that? That's like West Park or something like that. So if they go, if you go closer towards university, then all of a sudden you're more closer to the Sherman Circle area. You're more closer to, you know, more traffic. Wider, wider, you know, there's more cars that go on university than um, 441. There's a lot of Caribbean. I mean, Miramar is Caribbean, a majority is, Caribbean anyway, but I mean. This is true. This is very true. I think that, you know, they would probably experience a little bit more traffic and they would probably find a retail space that's a little bit bigger than what they have. Well, I mean, I'm not even saying it's so much like them just moving locations. I mean, like a new location, like all together, like expanding. Like yeah, opening yeah. Up they should expand. Brand. They should go to. They should go to. Yeah, like around the university area, a little bit more west, not too west, because if you go, if you go too west, like over I seventy five, all of a sudden, the uh, 
the demographics start to shift. Well, no, not really. It's predominantly the need, the black. Need, the need that, for spices goes down. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. but, like, but like that. Yeah. But you know what? You know what? This, mean, this is a common thread, though, like with a lot of our black businesses. We have a good, a, a really good product because you can see the food is definitely good, which is the most important part. Yeah. But look at all the things that could use a little bit of tweaking here and there. Not only that. Why are you not seizing the opportunity to grow, to expand, to put in another location, yeah. you know, to, you know, what I mean, to hire more employees, to market yourself? This is business 101. Why are we not doing these things? They need to take the plan that Pollo Tropical had, their business plan, and they need to just. I'm not going to say to do that because that's going to dilute the quality of their food drastically because yeah, Pollo Tropical yeah. is absolute trash, especially after 8 o'clock. You know what I'm saying? So, well, you know what? There's this Pollo Tropical in Hollandale that I, I went to a couple of times with uh, during my lunch. And to my surprise, they had all black people working in there. Immediately, I noticed that the chicken was seasoned. Okay. Okay, I did <laughs> not. The food, the, the rice was well done. The beans, the beans wasn't like soggy. Like the beans were, the beans were cooked perfectly. I was like, dang, the food actually tastes better here. The, to, not not to put down any other group of people, but you know, just black people know how to cook. People be fucking up. But anyway, yeah. aside from yeah. that, aside from that. Um, Definitely a lot of opportunity for this place to grow. Coconuts is they have a great product, great food, but let's let's take our ambition to the next level. Let's instead of creating a business, let's create empires. Let's create industry. Let's create conglomerates. Yeah. Let's do that. Okay? So we can take this thing to the next level, okay? Mm-hmm. Africanomy. Let's build an African economy. Yeah, and I think I think definitely if they had another location, um, they'll probably get more customers as well because of you know, say someone like me who live more west, I, w- I don't want to drive all the way from my house to go all the way there. You know, if there's something closer, they definitely get more there. customers. And you know what? You know, we're making, making it sound, sound e- we're making it sound easier than what it is, but still, it, it's going to be difficult. It's going to be similar to you. You know how you were when you opened up this first business okay but really not so much because all you're doing is copying the shit that you did before in another location yeah. so you know you're making money at this location you know it's probably gonna take X amount of time in order to break even at this location why not just redo it you know what I mean and double up your profits you know so this is how we need to be thinking you know what I mean? And then also, there's so many things that they could be tweaking on other ends and stuff to make their business run more efficient and flawlessly and customer service and things like that. But still, you guys get what I'm trying to say. All right. Growth, 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 growth. Mm-hmm. Anyway, aside from all that, that pretty much wraps up this edition of Black Business Review Coconuts. Uh, P, any final thoughts, anything, any message you want to give? Do you want to pray us out? What you want to do? What's what's going on? Oh, man, I mean, I'm good. <laughs> P is good. I am good, good as well. Um, again, if, if you, you have, have a business, business you'd like us to review, go ahead and hit us. We're still on POCundivided at gmail.com. We haven't done that yet. Uh, POCundivided at gmail.com. You can shoot us an email, and we'll be happy to look into your business to do a review. Um, if you need some financial management or counseling financial counseling feel free to also hit us up poc undivided at gmail.com you can also hit up my email daniel shane 41 at gmail.com p you got an email yet? poc undivided at gmail.com oh my goodness gracious i wonder how many weeks are going to go by before p actually gets an email and some contact information or we can it. hit him up i'll do it i'll do it you know one of these days don't hold your breath though people i'll do it but anyway any of those services any and all of the above Feel free to hit us up, but until next time, we'll holler.